Welcome to our second video tutorial in basic calculus. In this video, we will be discussing the limit theorems. So here are the limit theorems based on the learner's materials in basic calculus. Theorem number one. Let C, K, and M be real numbers and let F of X and G of X be functions defined on some open interval containing C except possibly at C. So the first theorem, if k is any constant, then the limit of k as x approaches c is equal to k. So sa madaling salita class, the limit of the constant is just equal to the constant itself. So here are some examples. The limit of 3 as x approaches 1 is equal to 3. So ang k natin dito is 3. Okay, so yung limit nito ay equal lang din sa 3. Regardless kung ano pang value ng ating c. Next, the limit of negative one-fourth as x approaches negative 3 is equal to negative one-fourth. Next, number 2. The limit of x as x approaches c is just equal to c. Okay, so dito, kumbaga parang sinubstitute lang natin yung constant dito sa x. Example natin. The limit of x as x approaches negative 5.245 is equal to negative 5.245 and... For the second example, the limit of x as x approaches 3 over 8 is equal to 3 over 8. Next, for the next remaining theorems, we will be assuming that the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to L, and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to M. So number 3, the constant multiple theorem. So ano ba sinasabi nito? The limit of k times f of x as x approaches c is just equal to k times the limit of f of x as x approaches c. Kung baga parang um, inilagay lang sa unahan yung constant natin na k, which is also equal to k times l. So para sa halimbawa natin, if limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 9, then the limit of 15 times f of x as x approaches c is just equal to 15 times the limit of f of x as x approaches c. Ngayon, na-mention na kanina kung anong value or kung saan equal yung limit of f of x as x approaches c. So, sabi dito, ito ay equal sa 9. So, hence, magkakaroon tayo dito ng 15 times 9, which is equal to 135. Next, number 4. So, for the fourth theorem, uh, the addition theorem. So, note, subtraction is also included in this law. So, the limit of f of x plus or minus g of x as x approaches c is just equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c plus or minus the limit of g of x as x approaches c. So, sa madaling salita class, uh, the limit of the sum or difference of two functions as x approaches c is just equal to the sum or difference of the two individual limits. So, mamaya magbibigay tayo ng halimbawa. <coughs> Equal lang din yan sa L plus or minus M. Next, uh, we have the multiplication theorem. The limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches c is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c times the limit of g of x as x approaches c. So, similar lang to sa addition theorem, only that, ang operation natin dito is, of course, multiplication. So, the limit of the product of two functions is equal to the product of the individual limits of the two functions. <coughs> equal lang din sa L times M. Next, we have the division theorem. So, similar lang din kanina. Ano, so, equal to sa limit of f of x as over g of x as x approaches c, which is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c over limit of g of x as x approaches c. Ngayon dito, class, equal lang din yan sa L over M such that M is not equal to 0. So, again, hindi pwedeng mag-0 yung ating denominator kasi nga it'll make it undefined. It'll make the function undefined. <coughs> Next, we also have the power theorem. So, the limit of f of x raised to p as x approaches c is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c raised to p which is equal lang din sa L raised to P. <coughs> Next, 
We also have the radical or root theorem. The limit of the nth root of f of x as x approaches c is just equal to the nth root of the limit of f of x as x approaches c. Which is equal lang then to the nth root of L. Next, let's have theorem number 2. So in here, let f be a polynomial of the form f of x is equal to a sub n times x sub a, a, times x raised to n plus a sub n minus 1 times x raised to n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2 times x raised to n minus 2 plus up to a sub 1 times x plus a sub 0. So if z is a real number, then the limit of f of x as x approaches c is just equal to f of c. So uh, kumbaga parang uh, <coughs> kinuha lang natin yung function value at the constant c. Okay? Next, theorem number 3. Let h be a rational function of the form h of x is equal to f of x over g of x. Where f and g are polynomial functions, if c is a real number and g of c is not equal to 0, take note of this, hindi tayo pwede magka 0 sa denominator, then the limit of h of x as x approaches c is equal to the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches c, which is also equal to f of c over g of c. So again, ha, yung g of c natin should not be equal to 0. Ayan. So, let's proceed na, class, with our examples. So, dito muna tayo sa example number 1. So, evaluate the limit of 5x minus 3 as x approaches 8. So, we can apply the previously discussed theorems in evaluating this. So, una, class, uh, we can actually use the addition theorem. So, again, sa addition theorem natin, kasama doon yung subtraction, okay? So, pwede natin paghiwalayin. So, ito, ay equal lang sa limit of 5x as x approaches 8 minus the limit of 3 as x approaches 8. So, pinag-separate lang. Then, isa-isahin natin. Uh, using the constant multiple theorem, yung limit of 5x as x approaches 8, yung, constant, yung k natin na 5, pwede natin ilagay sa unahan. Okay? So, magiging 5 times the limit of x as x approaches 8. And then, ito naman, class, um, the limit of the constant is just equal to the constant itself. So, ang k natin dito is 3. Ibig sabihin, itong expression na to ay equal lang sa 3. So, magkakaroon tayo ng 5 times the limit of x as x approaches 8 minus 3. Next, uh, simplify pa natin further. Itong limit of x as x approaches 8, diba, ito ay equal lang sa 8. Tama, ito yung... Yung si natin dito, kumbaga parang sinubstitute lang natin sa x dito. So, magkakaroon tayo ng 5 times 8 minus 3. So, 5 times 8 is 40. 40 minus 3 is equal to 37. Okay? So, uh, we can also find or evaluate the limit using theorem number 2. So, paano? So, direct substitution lang. So, the limit of 5x minus 3 as x approaches 8. So, substitute lang natin yung constant na 8 dito sa x. So, magkakaroon tayo ng 5 times 8 minus 3, which is equal to uh, 37 as well. Okay? <coughs> Next. Okay, example number 2. So, evaluate the limit of x squared plus 5x plus 10 all over x plus 1 as x approaches 1. So, the first thing that we'll do is to check. <coughs> Yung constant ba natin, will it make the denominator equal to 0? <coughs> no. Ano? Kasi... 1 plus 1 is 2, so no. Hindi niya gagawin yung 0 in denominator. So, pwede tayong mag-proceed na. So, una, um, we can um, use again the limit theorems discussed before para dito. So, una, pwede natin i-separate muna yung dalawa using the quotient theorem. So, ito ay equal lang to the limit of x squared plus 5x plus 10 as x approaches 1 all over the limit of x plus 1 as x approaches 1. So, ginamit lang natin yung quotient theorem. Next, um, using the addition theorem, pwede pa natin paghiwahiwalayin ito, right? So, equal lang yan sa limit of x squared as x approaches 1 plus the limit of 5x as x approaches 1 plus the limit of 10 as x approaches 1 all over the limit of x as x approaches 1 plus the limit of 1 as x approaches 1. <coughs> Ngayon, pwede na natin isimplify. So, dun sa una... 
ito ay equal lang sa magiging 1 squared, which is equal to 1. Sa pangalawa naman, so 5 times 1 equal lang sa 5. And then ito, limit of a constant is just equal to the constant itself. So ito ay equal lang sa 10. Okay? Nasa ilalim, equal lang ito sa 1. And then ito, again, is 1 lang din. Kasi nga, ang k mo dito is 1. So magkakaroon tayo ng 1 plus 5 plus 10 all over 1 plus 1. Which is equal to 16 over 2. Kapag sinimplify further, equal lang yan sa 8. Or again, meron tayong alternative solution using theorem number 2. So, direct substitution lang tayo, class. So, yung 1, sa substitute lang natin sa lahat ng excess natin dito sa ating function. So, magkakaroon tayo ng 1 squared plus 5 times 1 plus 10 all over 1 plus 1. So, 1 squared ay equal sa 1 plus 5 ay equal sa 6 plus 10 equal to 16 over 2, which is equal to 8 as well. Okay, so sana nakakasunod tayo. Nakasusunod ba, class? Okay, good. So, let's proceed, proceed to example number 3. <clears throat> so, evaluate the limit of the square root of 3x plus 19 all over 2x minus 6 as x approaches negative 1. So, check uli natin. Um, yung, ay, yung constant man natin, will it make the denominator equal to 0? So, 2 times negative 1, negative 2 minus 6, negative 8, no. So, we can proceed. <coughs> so, um, using again the quotient theorem, so pwede natin i-separate muna yung dalawa. So, ito ay equal lang to the limit of square root of 3x plus 19 as x approaches negative 1 all over the limit of 2x minus 6 as x approaches negative 1. So, simplifying this further, ito class radical or root theorem, equal lang yung numerator dito. The square root of the limit of 3x plus 19, kung ano yung nasa loob kanina, as x approaches negative 1. All over, ito pinaghiwalay na using the addition theorem, the limit of 2x as x approaches negative 1 plus the limit of negative 6 as x approaches negative 1. So, pwedeng ganyan, or pwede rin namang minus the limit of 6 as x approaches negative 1. Okay? So, simplify natin this further. So, to substitute na natin yung negative 1 dito sa 3. So, magkakaroon tayo ng negative 3 plus 19. So, square root of negative, uh, 3 times negative 1 plus 19 all over ito, 2 times negative 1 plus ito, still negative 6. So, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 19 is 16. So, magkakaroon tayo ng square root of 16 all over negative 8. Kasi diba, 2 times negative 1, negative 2, minus 6 is equal to negative 8. So, we'll get the principal square root of this. So, equal yan sa 4. Principal square root niya is 4. So, 4 over negative 8. Or, uh, kapag kinuha natin yung lowest term, parehong divisible yung numerator and denominator by 4. So, we can further simplify this as negative 1 over 2. Okay? Okay. And again, we can use the alternative solution natin using the theorem number 2. So, direct substitution lang, yung constant na negative 1, ipalit lang natin sa lahat ng x dun sa function. So, magkakaroon ka ng square root of 3 times negative 1 plus 19 all over 2 times negative 1 minus 6. Still, ang makukuha natin is square root of 16 over negative 8 which is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, yung lowest term. Okay, next, example number 4 na tayo. Ayan, so paano pag ito yung given? So we are asked to find or to evaluate the limit of x squared plus 8x plus 15 over x plus 3 as x approaches negative 3. So tingnan natin class yung constant. Will it make the denominator equal to 0? Yes, kasi diba, negative 3 plus 3 ay equal sa 0. So hindi allowed. So ano kayang pwede natin gawin? So, actually, mapapansin natin na yung numerator is still factorable. We can find the factors of the numerator. So, ano bang factors niyan? Factors niyan ay quantity of x plus 3 times the quantity of x plus 5. To check this, uh, you can actually use the FOIL method. Yung product ng first terms, x times x ay x squared. Product ng outer terms ay x times 5 ay 5x plus product ng ating inner terms. 5x plus 3x is 8x. 
And then, product ng last terms ay 5 times 315. So, indeed, ito nga ang factors nito. Okay, netong numerator. All over x minus 3. Ah, sorry. All over x plus 3, rather. Okay? So, dito, mapapansin natin, we can cancel out x plus 3. So, what will remain is the limit of x plus 5 as, as x approaches negative 3. So, pwede na natin tong i-simplify. So, this will give us negative 3 plus 5, which is equal to positive 2. Okay? So, ayun na yung ating limit. Okay? So, for the list of references, we have the following. So, sana nakasunod tayo sa discussion. So, that's the end. And thank you all for watching. See you on our next video tutorial. Bye!